Well, here's the thing. I don't trust the government. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Tiffany. If you're watching this for the first time, um, today I'm going to be doing like a chatty get ready with me while I did this look. So if you want to see how I did this look and see everything that I talked about, um, continue watching. I know it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Okay, so today we're going to do a chatty little get ready with me. I got some makeup. This cute little bag I got from um, Sephora. It's the Brother Valley's collaboration. And as you can see, I got a bunch of makeup in here. So we're going to go through this and try to do my makeup. I'm going to try to do it because child everything in this power tried to get me not to do this video like everything started to happen so i'm gonna try to hurry up and do this before the light goes down because it's supposed to rain today and i don't want to lose light so let's start i probably should have dumped this out ahead of time um but i didn't how have you guys been? I know I haven't been on here in a minute. I I know I deleted, well, I didn't delete it, but I um, uh, made all of the videos that I had a while ago private because I want to like start from scratch, start over new. So if I don't mention any of the products that I'm using, I'll make sure I'll put it down below. But I just wanted to do like a little cute reintroduction and get on here and talk about some things um, and about the future of this channel and then some little things like manifestation and pivoting and stuff like that. So yeah, as you can see, like this bag is huge, really cute. I'll link it down below. Um, I hope I'm like really close. Okay, I'm going to try to talk and do my makeup which is like girl you should know how to do but that's this is like my first time doing like a get ready in me get ready with me let me put my hair so how have you guys been i've been doing, doing good like really adjusting to everything that's going on i live in one of the places that you probably don't really want to live in during this time but i feel like the governor is being really responsible he's keeping everything closed or in a social distance type of way that we can like still kind of have things open yeah but other than that everything's been going on good okay so i'm using the milk hydro primer to start off so for this channel I probably should have used my the putty stuff I'm gonna just use the primer today um yeah so again like I've been like thinking about getting back on YouTube and I was like you know what I'm just really gonna get back on here and just start from scratch start talking about things that I want to really talk about because prior to now, I was like in the fashion industry and doing things with fashion tech. And that was kind of the direction that I wanted my channel, but I was really extremely bu busy. And then I was in the mix of transitioning out of that. So it became kind of like not my interest at the moment to do that anymore. So I kind of put that on a halt. I'm going to use this too, the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. And just put a little bit. Usually I'll put that on first. I'm just going to put just a little bit in my T-zone. This is like not. Yeah, so. I am currently transitioning out of 
working in the corporate fashion industry and doing some other stuff which i'm like really trying to manifest so i'm not going to talk too much about it right now but i'm going to incorporate some things into my channel but of course i still love fashion so it's like i cannot talk about it but for the most part it's like something i'm kind of venturing out of i like to set my powder jackie Ina, and also Wayne Goss, it was somebody else talked about like setting your powder after your primer and I tend to do that but child this video is all over the page this is my first time doing a get ready with me I'm using the Laura Mercier translucent powder and let's see if I can like not get <laughs> makeup on this black top which i'm already getting it on my pants so we'll see oh that's a lot yeah so but again about me for those who haven't tuned into this channel before um i worked in the fashion industry uh, I worked for some really cool brands like um, Manolo Blahnik, Escada. Um, I did some temp work with some other brands I don't want to say. And then my last job was at Farfetch. And as I was uh, coming to the end of that, I started to realize like I wanted to do something else. So yeah, that's where I'm kind of like moving in a different direction still working and still wanting to work in the arts but just trying to um do a completely different industry which is i mean the arts the genre is the same it's still the arts but the industry is a bit different um i'm using nars radiant uh natural radiant longwear and then the color it's aruba I used this the other day where I had to do like a um, a meeting, a Zoom meeting, and the makeup looked really nice. I'm gonna try to recreate that. I'm like all over the place, y'all. Sorry. Um, moving forward with this channel, I want to kind of just talk about my interests, whether it's you know style, beauty. Um, some lifestyle, but also really merging into talking about television and film, how I get inspired from that, and just a little different stuff like that. So I'm like, I'm trying to like see what I'm doing. Yeah. If I'm looking over to the side, it's because I have a mirror. But yeah, y'all like this pandemic stuff is crazy i know we can't really talk about it but i ain't monetize it i got like a little bit of followers but it's okay how do y'all feel about taking the vaccine um so here's the thing i don't trust the government however the government is too greedy <laughs> to not have this country or this yeah this country opened back up um, because they are too greedy. So the vaccine is going to be fine. I feel as though the vaccine is going to be fine. But, you know, I know how like a lot of people of color, especially black people, they don't really have the best relationship with the government because, I mean, looking at like two, the, the last two movies that I watched, were literally about how the government sabotaged two black figures. Uh, I, I watched uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. The government set that man up to, to kill him. And then the other movie was The United States versus Billie Holiday, which the government literally set her up like nonstop. It was just so crazy. And how they, oh my God. And then. Shout out to Tremonte, because I wasn't, I don't know why I didn't know, 
no, not even shout out to Javante. Shout out to his fiance because she is getting <laughs> the business, okay? That sex scene, I was like, oh my God. I felt seen. I was like, oh, okay. Okay, Javante. All right. All right. Okay. But yeah, that was a really good movie. I know people were saying like they didn't, some people were saying like they didn't like it, but it was a really good movie to me. Yeah, I think I want to do another coat. I didn't even color correct, but it's okay. Let's do probably another coat so that I'm doing this without a mirror in front of me, y'all. Just work with me. I'm going to try not to put it. So you can see. Yeah, but. And I got some really dope ideas that I want to do for this channel. I'm going to try. Listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. Listen. Work with the kid. Please work with the kid. Because doing a video every day. I mean, sorry. Not a very. Once a week, I know. I have, like, other stuff going on. And I'm going to try to do at least once every week every other week and then like kick it up um because the other projects that i'm working on is like really my main priority and this is I'm, I'm really trying to do this to like get out of my comfort zone of being like recluse and being reserved and also it'll help me be a better public speaker and the thing that i'm transitioning out of i need to know how to pitch i need to know how to explain the different things and I think that this will be a great um like a little passion project to do to help me with that even though I'm not really talking about the same thing or things um it would be something that would be really helpful actually I like this my skin is still seeping through but I like that because I don't like to look super beat um I don't like looking super beat. It's just not my thing. I don't like it. Um, so yeah. Like. I love this foundation. I actually got this not too long ago. And I'm like, where have I been? Where have I been? Super cute. But yeah, like I was saying, like I have a lot of cute little ideas that I'm going to do. Um, that I'm trying to do moving forward with this channel and I'm going to try but the only thing is it's like really hard to like do things I'm not going to be vlogging in the house like um, that's something that I'm not going to do but um, LA is not open so doing stuff outside of like style videos and um, my interest videos in the house is like I don't want it to get redundant so that's why I really I want to start with every two weeks and then like really build up the content to be you know dope so yeah this is kind of blended in really well I like that it looks like my skin you can still see my skin seeping through but it looks natural so pretty good pretty good I love I love I love um, so yeah, and then let me know, like, anything that y'all want me to, like, discuss or talk about. I'm open to what y'all gotta say, too. This video is all over the place, y'all, but I do want to talk about child manifesting because I feel like everybody is talking about manifesting and the law of attraction and what I've learned I've been a very good manifester I it was, it was to the point where I didn't really even know what I didn't really know what I was doing I'm going to set my powder one more time I know y'all like girl what are you doing but Actually, no, let me wait. Um, I was a really good, let me do my brows. Shit. Uh, I was a really good manif 
man manifester. So let me kind of tell you like the first major thing that I manifested. So when I was in college, um, I went to Bloomsburg University. I was a psych major, but some racist stuff happened. And I, um, it kind of, it was a blessing in disguise. I'm looking for my eyebrow brush. Sorry, y'all. It was a blessing in disguise. So basically, I wasn't supported in the major as a psych major. I switched my advisor twice and it, I, I was done. So I went to go see another professor that I knew that wasn't, he was just like a general advisor um, that I came through his program. And he basically was like, we sat down and we went over like my strengths and we kind of like discussed what were the what what type of things that I wanted to do so I have always been a really good writer and after meeting with him and being supported by him shout out to Dr. Wright Dr. Irvin Wright he um I he co not convinced me but with his guidance I really understood like I'm a good writer won't won't maybe I should switch my major to English um, and move forward with that. And at the same time, there was the show. I, I w kind of was like, oh, maybe I want to work in the fashion industry. So I was like, maybe I could be like a fashion writer, a fashion editor. So that was something that I was thinking about. I didn't even like, mind you, like I'm a product of my environment. I'm from Philly. I grew up down North Philly, moved in West Philly. You don't have no fashion editors in in Philly, like you're you, you you a nurse, you do hair, you you work for the government, like you know, uh, general government workers, um, social worker, or you have like a general job, a, a everyday working class job, like working for the post office, working for this, this working for um, you know UPS, FedEx, and other stuff like that. So like those type of like artsy careers, that wasn't something that was really I don't want to say promoted but it wasn't you it, you really didn't see that you you this was like working class um that kind of atmosphere so I even me going into college I wanted to be a psychiatrist so even that was just like something that was outside of like anybody in my family was doing like I didn't know what a psychiatrist and so, actually, my neighbor was a psychiatrist. We moved to West Philly. Um, and that's so funny because a year after we moved, we noticed, like, all of the, the block was, like, really, uh, it was a predominantly white neighborhood. And then, like, a year after we moved, like, majority of the people left. And I was, like, I still to this day, I was talking to my mom about that. And I was, like, that was so crazy, like, how the neighborhood just shifted and then like a lot of black people just started moving in but um yeah so I switched my major and I got a new advisor who was a blessing like Dr. Terry Riley who has passed away I think he passed away in November of 2019 which was really sad because I was looking him up because I wanted to reach out to him for some guidance on this new transition that I was making for my career and he actually I found out that he actually passed away so that was super sad but um yeah fast forward back to school so I get my advisor he's super helpful um and we're like going over we set up a plan like he's really like like giving me guidance on like what I should do. So during this year, this was like in the early 2000s, there was a show called Power Girls and it was about Lizzie Grubman. I don't know if you know the, she was like a celebrity publicist. She did like the major, she would do like Diddy's white party, Diddy's infamous white party every year. Um, she was the publicist for like Mary Kate, and Ashley Olsen like this is when they were in the tabloids heavy and like everybody she was like their publicist so she had a firm and it was the name of the show was called Power Girls and in the show 
basically majority of the girls were white but there was one girl who her name was Millie and she they she had like this whole catchphrase like I'm an African princess or whatever like that it was like a whole catchphrase but she was like I thought she was like really dope in the sense of like she was like this black girl doing this public publicist work she um she was living in like a condo in I don't know if it was the west side or the east side the lower west side or the upper west east side it was one of them and she was like rocking Chanel and I'm like I too want to live in a condo <laughs> on the upper east side or lower west side of you know I saw that so when you're able to see someone doing things it becomes more of a reality right so I was like I want to learn more about PR so then I literally was like I was like I want to live on the upper east side I'm let me just say upper east side I want to live on the upper east side living in a condo you know working in fashion and doing some PR work like I want to learn more about this like I can see myself doing this so um let me move on from my brows y'all sorry um she she was doing that yes Grace. And again, I didn't list this, but this is old. This is Anastasia Beverly Hills. You can tell how old this is, but I'm using the brunette powder. It's a duo. I use the lighter brunette color. But she literally um, was dope to me. I thought it was really dope. So at the time, because I was like, oh, I want to kind of like learn more about being a writer and fashion I started to write for the school newspaper. I became um, a news editor and I also was a writer. So I started writing, sorry. I started writing. So I started, girl. It's messy, girl, what are you doing? So I started um, writing for the school paper and I started getting my foot wet and seeing like how I cannot do two things at once. I started writing for the school paper and I started to get like my foot wet and trying to see like how this industry is like okay I can write even though it wasn't fashion I was still you know writing for a paper so I, you know either way I'm still writing so that was still a good look so one day um there was a like a trip um to New York that everybody from the um, paper, everybody from the paper was going to go to New York for like a job fair. And I couldn't go because I had a test. But a friend of mine who was also working on the um, paper, he went and I told him, I was like, yo, can you get me like any type of literature about any internships? Can you get it for me? And he was like, cool. So he came back and he got me some literature on different and well it was one it was one internship so the internship was through a fashion school called Marist College and I was like this is like a dream come true so I wrote down I made a list like I'm going to I'm going to apply for this. I didn't say that I'm going to win. I'm said, I said I'm going to I wrote down everything everything that the the um requirements to apply for the internship was like get a letter of recommendation, do this, do this. I wrote everything down like a list and then I applied, mind you. I was like I didn't think that I was going to win this internship because I didn't go to a fashion school. I didn't have any experience in fashion other than like little work that I did um, 
like little uh, little retail work. Like little retail work. So, so I applied to the internship, and I won. The internship entailed students going to move to New York for a semester and work at a fashion company. So it could be anywhere. Like you had to, once you got the internship, then you had to go on another interview with a fashion company. So I went to, I got the, the, I got accepted into the internship. Mind you, it was only three people selected out of like thousands of people and I got picked. And I was like, I was telling her, I was like, I really want to like learn more about PR. I was like, I, I'm writing, I, I'm in between writing for fashion and wanting to work in PR. So she was like, okay, cool. The, um, the lead, the, uh, the head of the um, internship was like, okay, cool. So what I'll do is like, I'll set you up on a couple of interviews. So I went to New York for like a day and I went on a bunch of interviews with publications. Um, and then the following week happened and she was like, I found out about a really great company that is hiring interns for PR. Would you be interested in it? And she she didn't really tell me the brand. And I was like, yeah. She was like, okay, the brand is Escada. She was like, so I did a phone. That was my first ever phone interview. And I killed it. Like, it was a really great experience. I did the phone interview. I did really well. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so where was I at? Okay, so I did the phone interview. It went great. Excuse me. I did the phone interview and it went great. I didn't even do um, my top. That's cool. I'm using the Huda uh, Banana Bread Loose Powder. Yeah. So then, I did the in. So after I did the interview, I got the internship. Like, I got the internship for the program, and then I got the internship with the company Escada. So, after that, she told me where I was going to live. And she was like, okay, so we're going to put you in housing in the Upper East Side. So, I was like, oh my God. I'm going to be living in the Upper East Side in housing. It was cute. It was really nice housing. Working in PR. Like, I literally said, I know I said it like this, but it was like, I made an initiative. I saw something. I believed I can do it. I started to, I, it was like literally drawn to me. The opportunity came to me in a sense of like, I found out about this internship and I apply for it. So it's literally aligning with a purpose that is designed for you. So that was like the first time. And it has been many other times where um, I have done things like that without even really knowing. But a lot of the times I would just like speak it into existence like, yo, I think I could do this. Or write things down and say, you know, that this is a goal and another thing like I know people talk about scripting I find that I don't really script I just write things down as a list and it's always something that I believe that I can actually accomplish and it will actually come to fruition but I do want to talk about pivoting because a lot of people don't talk about what happens when you manifest something big but it kind of falls through the cracks so recently, um, I manifested something really, really huge. For this new transition that I'm making, it was really, really huge. And I know for a fact that I manifested it because I put it on my vision board a few months before. And 
within a week of me getting it, I'm not going to say what it is because I'm actually trying to, like, I'm going to manifest it, but I know why Think it didn't really fall, it didn't really come to fruition fully, but long story short, I had found out about something, the opportunity had came my way, I'm not going to say what it is, but it came my way, and... I, you know, entertained it and I kind of want it, but then something happened and it didn't, I had to like let it go. So, oh my God. Okay. Y'all going to have to deal with this light because the lighting is kind of off now because it's supposed to rain. So yeah, but, um, Sorry, I know I'm like all in your way. Yeah, so the lighting. Can y'all still see me? Okay. So me doing, talking and doing this at the same time is not a go for me. Okay. So anyway, it was huge. It was big. But it fell through. However, I didn't do much in. It fell through. But I know. Sorry, y'all. I'm like trying to see what. But it fell through. So I was wondering, like, why would I win something really, really dope or achieve some, receive something really, really dope only for it? to kind of fall through and then I realized um it was more so a sign for me to know the direction that I'm moving in and to let me know that I wasn't quite quite ready for it however I'm in the right direction not only that it also taught me how to pivot to understand like you have to align like if something is off you don't want to ever receive something that is not quite at least for me i feel like i was being protected because i know for a fact that this thing was so huge that if i wasn't fully ready for it i would have crashed and burned and it would have been like bad so that really allowed me to see how is life happening for you it is actually protecting you at least that's how I feel I feel like whenever I don't get something but the fact that I like it was I was just like super grateful like I was acknowledged for this even though it didn't fall through I know that I'm going to achieve it so it was like more so confirmation that I was on the right step so I say that all to, to say like sometimes when things don't really go the way you want to it's good to like pivot and understand like, okay, this didn't work out, but I'm going to move this way so that I can move forward and understand that if this doesn't fall through, like, let me give you a different analogy because I know I'm like not being really uh, transparent about what it is because I'm actually going to manifest it. Like I, now I know for a fact, like this is going to happen. Like I'm going to manifest it. So let's say like you, you're trying to buy a house. Um, this is not what happened to me, but let's just say, like, you're trying to buy a house and you, you get a, I don't know how the housing system works, but let's say like, let's say you're trying to, okay, in, I don't know how it is everywhere, but in LA, they have certain houses that you can't even go see without them, like, um, doing like a full background check on you because these houses are so luxurious. They're, they're, they cost a lot of money. So you can't even do like an open house. You have to like literally, it's like a private housing listing that you have to do. They have to run your credit and everything. Even these little open houses that you see the open door, like th these houses are like 36 million, like, you know, stuff like that. So let's say you're trying to get a $36 million house. And you got approved to, you know, the realtor was like, okay, um, you can come see the listing. You checked all the boxes for the background check. So 
you go in, you see the house, you like, I, I want this house. But somehow, let's say somebody lose their job and it's like right now is not the best time to purchase this house because it's not a really good time. Like one of one of the incomes that's coming in, they lost they like they lost their job. Like something crazy happened. But if you're trying to buy a thirty six million dollar house, um, losing one job, you should have never been trying to buy that house. But I'm just giving an example, like let's say like What's Erica's husband? Let's say it's like a Erica. Um, I don't know what her last name is from Beverly Hills, but let's say like the assets get taken or something like that, and it's like okay, you cannot buy no house right now. Like we need to focus on rebuilding or restructuring, and that pushes you to work even harder to refine to you know get your finances in order, and then. A year later, you're able to buy a house. I 1000% believe that whatever happened with the finances that, you know, didn't allow you to buy the house was a blessing. It was a blessing. It was happening for you so that you can work to, re, you know, restructure your financing, your finances so that you can move forward and purchase another house or it could be like that wasn't the house for you so i don't ever look at it as if you know um something is i don't want to say like a a a negative thing i always i personally feel like life is happening for you not to you um but i do feel like when that situation fell through for me it pushed me to work a little harder in the sense of working on that subject. And then something else came my way. And I'm still waiting to hear hear back about that. But I was just like, damn, that's so crazy how, like, that happened. And then, like, something else came my way that was, like, even better. Um, Even though the other thing was amazing. And it's still amazing, like... I'm just like blown away. I know y'all like, girl, what are you talking about? Like, you're so all over the place. But yeah, like pivoting, learning how to pivot, learning how to take a situation that seems like a disaster or seems like really sad. Because I'm not going to front. Like, when I found out that it didn't really go through for me, I was like, well, why would I, like, why did it kind of go through? And I was like, you know what? This is, this is like setting me up for like for me to be on on the situation and it was literally a situation out of my control I had no control over it so that's how I knew it wasn't really like me sabotaging but it was like like I was not at a level like my vibration wasn't high enough for me to really be ready for that so once I like work on some other things get my vibration higher then everything will fall through not like it will come through like it'll align but yeah i was like Ooh, that was a really great lesson for the beginning of because it was like the beginning of january january it had january um i got the the notice for it and then february i got it and in the same week it was like going and i was like this is starting off to be not a really great year like what is going on but when I when I started to think about I was like no this is actually a really good blessing and it allowed me to see like yo you are on your way sis you are on your way this is max dark deep Mm -mm. so yeah (laughs) I got this like little (laughs) yeah but I'm like really super grateful. 2020 was a very weird year where it was like um, blessings, but also like you see other things going on for people around you, um, the city not being open, and then like also other things. It's just like, it was very weird. And then to happen for 2021, to start off like on a high note and then like kind of transition to like, 
well, what happened? And then, like, you kind of realize, I'm like, okay, no, this is, like, really a great thing, actually. Um, it was really dope. So, yeah, that was really, 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 really dope. I think my eyes last, y'all. That's how I, yeah. I hope this uh, video wasn't, like, super all over the place. If it was, y'all, sorry. I gotta get used to, like, talking and doing my makeup because I'm not used to it at all. And I don't have, like, the best setup. Like, I have, like, stuff over here and I know I, like, keep looking. But, yo, this blush, this Patrick Ta blush, I have it in She's That Girl. She's That Girl. So, it's, like, a cream mixed with a powder. So you put the cream on first, and this is pigmented, okay? Pig I mean, it's very pigmented. Look at that. It's very pigmented. I did not put my other setting powder on, but I'm not going to use it today. I'm just going to use um This is so pretty. Look how pretty that is. The clouds is also pretty too. Oh my God, y'all. It So in LA, it rarely thunderstorms or light or we have lightning. Girl, I saw this bright light. I was like, what the hell is that? Girl started thundering. I was like, what the hell is going on? Oh my God, like the pimple, not on the pimple. I did not color correct that, but that's okay. This blush is so pretty. And I didn't even put, sorry, my brush is a little old. This is a MAC Travel brush. It doesn't even have the numbers on here. But, um, look how pretty this is. Sorry. This is a pretty blush. Like, the, <laughs> the threads keep coming on my face. And then I use the powder. Now, I'm just going to, like, lightly tap it because I honestly don't need all of that. My brush, like, the brush is over. Girl, we gonna get some more brushes. Honestly, you could wear the, um, this is horrible. Why? <laughs> Why is it still, it's time for me to get a new brush. Mm. Damn, I didn't bring my other brush. I don't feel like getting up, but, um, hopefully. I don't know why it's, like, showing off for the, it's showing off for y'all. Because it'll never be shutting like this. Come on now, girl. Get it together, girl. I like to go ham on the, br the blush because it just looks nice. But I'm going to blend this out a little bit. I'm going to blend it out just a little bit. Yeah, but what else have I been watching? Because I do want to talk about television more television and film and like how I'm inspired by television I want to um do a a book not book reviews but like a quick book wrap up I, there was some really great books that I read last year um and some books that I'm reading now and I'm rereading Toni Morrison's books which I'm like when you read things when you're younger and then read things over when you're an adult it's like so crazy how you do view the characters differently so yeah i want to give some book reviews um it's this documentary so i love documentaries so i will be talking about documentaries on the show um hbo max did a documentary on uh the black the 25 i think it's like 20th century i forget the title but it's like basically it's a black art documentary um showcasing um the anniversary of i think it's like 25th century don't get i'll write it somewhere <laughs> whatever but that documentary was so good and it's so crazy because every year before the pandemic um i would go to the museum for my birthday and i went to the lacma i think it was like 2018 2018 or 20 yeah, it was 2018. It was either... Tw no, 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 no. It was 2019. 2019, I went to the LACMA and I saw Charles White's exhibit. And that's how... I, I knew 
Jacob Lawrence was a, a painter that I was really, really familiar because I love the Harlem Renaissance. Like, I'm obsessed with Harlem. Like, my first apartment was in Harlem. I, I just love, I love Harlem. Like, that was the first place that I moved to um, when I was, and that's another thing that I manifested. I moved to, uh, I moved to New York a year after I graduated college. Um, and I lived in, uh, New York in Harlem for two years. The most beautiful brownstone apartment manifested it. Um, and it was just like so dope, but yeah, I have a sweet space for Harlem. Like Harlem is like my second home. Um, well literally cause it was like my first apartment outside of Philly was, it was my first apartment ever, but like I lived in Philly like majority of all my life and then move into Harlem, um, New York and living in Harlem. Like that was my first place. So yeah. So Jake, Jacob Lawrence was somebody that I was really familiar with cause he was one of the painters during the Harlem Renaissance. And, um, they did like an expo on like all of the artists, even like, um, the artists that, what was, I forget everybody's name. I'm going, I'm drawing blank, but, um, the two artists that did Michelle Obama's, um, portrait and then also, uh, Ken Hyde, I think his name, Ken Hyde, I don't know, um, that did his, uh, did, uh, Barack Obama's portrait for, um, is it the Smithsonian? That's where all of the president figures pictures are I think so whatever um yeah but they did a documentary on that and I want to talk about you know different art books that I have and how I'm inspired by art I want to do a Bob Ross reenactment Pre preferably on the beach I want to kind of do you know a Bob Ross me I don't know how to paint I know how to sketch a little bit but it's just like a fun way to draw out creativity, writing, painting, you know, stuff like that. So now I'm using the Morphe eyeshadow palette and is that a set? Oh, bronze babe, bronze babe, Morphe. And these colors are super, sorry. I'm trying not to show. <laughs> colors are super cute. Yeah, but that documentary was dope. I watched the Cecil Hotel documentary. That was crazy. I'm going to use Road Trip and see what happens. Um, I know I did my blush first, but... The Cecil Hotel that shit was crazy because I live in LA and like oh my god downtown LA I know people don't get me talking about the like the um like this the situation with like Skid Row and I know people are like mad but I'm just like yo we're all suffering so for y'all to act like the homeless population is not also suffering too. Like, I hate when people. Do, I I don't know. I was I was walking to a coffee shop, and there was a tent in the neighborhood that I was in, which is like a really nice neighborhood. And this man was walking his dog, and he was like, like going like this towards the tent. And I'm like, are you serious right now? Like, we're all suffering. Like, they don't have anything. Like, don't do that. I don't I don't like when people do that. And I get it, like, the homeless population in L.A. At first, I was like, why is it so many homeless people in L.A.? Like, this is, like, this is abnormal. Like, I'm from a, a large city, and I understand, like, you know, there will be, like, there's a large homeless population anywhere you go. And I, spe specifically, L.A. is very huge. So, but when I heard that, government the government literally is taking people and dumping them in like skid row 
I was like, this makes, I, this is why there's so many people. They're like busting up people and putting them in skid row. And then they're like literally making it so like, okay, you not, you can stay in skid row, but y'all can't go nowhere else. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, why can't y'all just like really help? There has to be something that can be done like to help these people so crazy oh i'm using road trip on my lid or in my crease and bringing it down to my lid yeah but that's sad i was like and then i was seeing all the videos about people how everybody's moving out of la and i'm like i get it la is weird but it's just so many, it's just so much opportunities here to like leave. It's like, well, I ain't leaving. But it is a weird city. It's a weird city, but I'm here. So I ain't gonna like front on it. <laughs> like, I feel like, what was that movie? The Last Black Man in San Francisco when he was on the bus and the worker was like, she, she was like, San Francisco is so uh ghetto. Or I don't think she said ghetto, but something like that. And he was like, excuse me. Don't shit on San Francisco. <laughs> I feel like I'm not going to do that. Because you moved here, girl. Don't try to shit on San Francisco. And you moved to San Francisco. So I'm not going to shit on LA. Because I live here. I'm just going to try to bring positive energy to LA. And don't get me wrong. Like, I met some really dope people in... Um, LA there's some really dope people that I met so it's not everybody it's just like the mentality of be of entitlement that's what I don't like it is a weird entitlement atmosphere that everybody doesn't have it's just some people and then you have like the entertainment industry so it's like that's another whole story yeah but yeah I like this it's really pretty but I am excited. What other stuff that I was watching? Um, Judas and the Black Messiah. I watched. Oh, Malcolm and Marie. Okay, so let's just talk about it. <laughs> Malcolm and Marie. Malcolm and Marie was very interesting. And I say that because, don't judge me, y'all. But there was, okay, I'm nothing like Malcolm. Nothing. Nothing. And I'm nothing like Marie. But there were things about Malcolm that I started to look at in the sense of like, I saw a lot of like think pieces on how like, first of all, Essence wrote a think piece about Malcolm saying like, we love to see a man showing vulnerability. I'm like, Malcolm was toxic, toxic as hell. Like, I don't even think that Malcolm was being vulnerable. I think that he was, he doesn't know how to range his emotions and he doesn't like to be vulnerable. So he attacks in a sense so to seem like he's being loving. It's just very weird and awkward. But there was one scene in the bathroom where he started to like go on this like, mean rant about the women that he was with and also it was like one detail about his father if you haven't seen this movie this is a spoiler alert was well, the semi spoiler alert but he started to go on details about like the specific scene that he had with his father okay so let me ch go back Malcolm and Marie is literally about the story of a young director who um he recently showed the screening this is the night of him showing the screening for his new sh movie called Imani, which is based off of, loosely based, or all of based off of Marie. It's about a girl who, a black woman who has a drug addiction problem. I don't know if in the movie she was also an actress in the movie, but Marie is Malcolm's girlfriend and she was an actress i think that's probably how they met and when they first met she was a drug addict like she was really on drugs and 
there was like one scene where she was like saying how well he used it against her and said stated like she was a mess when he met her and she tried to commit suicide with a nail clipper like the I guess like the clippers from the nail and I'm just like yo why would you use that against her but yeah it follows their story so in this night when he has the screener for this movie he made this movie that was loosely based off of her life and he thanks everyone but he forgets to thank Marie so when she gets home when they get home he requested for her to make them some macaroni and cheese and first of all no wonder y'all beefing y'all making easy mac this is why this is probably this is the this is where the problem is in the relationship starting off you can't make no baked macaroni and cheese that was number one i was like this is what is this no wonder y'all beefing that was that and then um but that's like a little silly goofy thing that i'm just like making fun of but the whole argument they go on like this whole argument about you know why he should why he forgot to thank her and it goes into them going back and forth the entire night then he goes on he reads the review and he reads the review that one of the um critics at the screening um wrote for him that night and he goes on a whole rant and she did a great i mean she didn't do a great review but she gave him a good review and he goes off and this is another question i have because as a black artist malcolm is saying that he doesn't want to be put in a box and that he just because he makes a movie about a, a black woman being on drugs is not a political piece which I disagree because if you know anything about the American government uh like even looking at it today how like when black people weren't on drugs nobody wanted to like really open up their arms to them they send them to jail it's just like a whole political like there's a hierarchy and now when there's other women or people now soccer moms is on drugs they're on opiums now we're it's a it's a this is a problem this is we have to fix this problem but it wasn't like that for a certain group of people because there is a hierarchy in america and racism and other stuff so i get what he was trying to say but it's good to like not be put in a box i understand that but also I'm like one like so why does everyone have a problem with Tyler Perry? Because like there is like as as an artist myself, when you want to talk about a topic, and let's say you just like write about a topic, right? And you're writing from the black perspective, especially if you're American and this is a story and you want it to be close to reality, there is going to be an element of the black plight or the struggle like there's going to be an element of that or there's going to be an element of not wanting to represent a black person in a certain light this is why people i don't feel this way i love tyler perry i respect tyler perry do i align with all of his work no i don't but I respect Tyler Perry. I just watch what works for me and whatever don't work for me, I just try not to watch. So that's how I feel about it. I don't ever bash Tyler Perry. I just just be like, girl, what what are we doing here? And I went to go see Acrimony in the movie theater. So I paid money. And that movie theater was packed too. I went to the Grove and it was like everybody. It was black people, white people, Asian people, Hispanic people. Like it was kids in there. I was like, y'all bringing the babies to Acrimony? Like, this is weird. But, yeah, that movie theater was packed. And it was like a Sunday at like 3. I was like, damn, this is like, this is crazy. But, yeah, so, was, I mean, I was just like, and then it's like, well, does Malcolm really feel this way? Or is it because Malcolm, this is written by a white man like I don't know I just have like kind of mixed thoughts about like 
you saying is like everything doesn't have to be about race but like everything is about race Malcolm it is about race to the point where when you move into a neighborhood fast forward back to what I said when my family moved into the neighborhood it was predominantly white a year later they they moved out <laughs> It was like no longer, I was like, this is interesting. This is very interesting because the, the property went down. The property goes down, unfortunately, when black people move into neighborhoods, but the property will go back up when predominant, like when it becomes a predominantly white neighborhood or starts to get gentrified or when like a Starbucks moves into the neighborhood, that property about to go up. And you know other people about to start moving in. So I'm just like, everything is about race, Malcolm. But let me go back. So the reason why I said like, I kind of, uh, gravi- I don't want to say I gravitated to, but my idea of like looking at something in a spectrum of like seeing simil- similar or similarity um, aspects of myself is like why didn't when they were in that bathroom scene why didn't marie know some of those details specifically the detail about his father i was like why doesn't she know this because this nigga don't like to be vulnerable and i was like am i being is this me which is something that i don't like to be which is very weird usually women are very vulnerable and they like spill their heart out uh first of all i was like marie i would have got that out of him i am someone who my partners will vent to me and they have no problem like i like i said when i was first starting to go to college i wanted to be a psychiatrist because people tend to vent to me they feel comfortable talking to me also because i am not biased i will give you a general answer answer this or a general opinion that's not going to be biased so that was that but I was like damn like why doesn't she notice because I would have got maybe Kiki I wouldn't have known about Kiki because clearly I don't know if he cheated with her or I don't know what that was about but and you still got I would have cussed him out when I tell you I would have cussed him out cussed him out girl but Kiki, I probably wouldn't have known about that. But everything else, I was like, why doesn't she know about this? Clearly, because he does not want to talk about... He doesn't like to be vulnerable. He likes being an emotional terrorist, like she said. I'm not an emotional terrorist, but I don't like being vulnerable, which is not a good thing. Because it can shine through in other aspects of the relationship. But that's like mostly what I saw in the movie that I kind of connected with also the reason probably why I don't like to be vulnerable is because he used it against Marie and I don't ever want somebody to use my vulnerability against me it's probably another reason why but it is what it is but yeah I was like this movie is crazy I just the only thing like I wish it was beautifully shot Zendaya and John David Washington was beautiful to look at as a couple. I thought it was like really dope. I don't know why people, first of all, why was people mad about her age difference? I'm like, y'all never dealt with somebody that was five years. How old is he? I don't remember how old. Five. She's grown. He's grown. Even if it was like. I've dealt with men that were older than... Like, I'm I'm like, wait, Jay-Z and Beyonce? Like, I don't understand what's the problem. Like, as long as she's not 17 or 18, like, what are y'all worried about? Like, just y'all acting real weird. And I didn't think she looked like a little girl because in that dress, she looked fire. I was like, she looked like a grown-ass woman to me. But that's just me. I'm like, y'all taking this out of too much. Y'all doing too much. But, um, yeah, it was a cute movie. It was, it was, I wish that it was more, it was lighter and not so heavy so that I can watch it multiple times. Or I wish there was more embrace because it was a lot of, I know it was an argument, but I'm like, damn, could y'all like just be nice to each other just for like 
20 more minutes just for 20 more minutes and then you know what was so funny about this movie this <laughs> he was like i don't need you i don't need you i love you or something like that but every time marie got up and left the house or went to the bathroom or something he was like marie marie where you, where you go? I'm like, damn, like, she can't go to the bathroom, baby boy. Like, what's going on? I was like, I'm triggered. Because every time I go to the bathroom, somebody be like, where you going? I'm like, I'm going to the bathroom. Can I go to the, I'm, I'm thinking. I was kind of triggered about that. But guys love, I don't know. But anyway, let me shut up. Anyway, that was a good movie. It was a good movie. I know people had, like, their thoughts on it. Like, oh, my God. They're just arguing for 20 minutes. Well, that's what the movie is about. Like, and y'all act like people don't argue for like long ass times. I've witnessed arguments for long ass time. So, I don't know. Oh, it's super weird. My under eye kind of creased, but that's okay. Yeah, it was a cute movie. Um, I'm trying to see what else did I see. Oh, Judas and the Black Messiah. Okay. So, Judas and the Black Messiah, which was really good. I've never... I knew about... Sh I think it's Shaka King. I feel like that's his name. I don't know. Shaka... I, Newlyweeds, I remember... Um, See, I, I, I don't think I watched all of Newlyweeds. But I know... Yeah, I remember Newlyweeds came out a while ago. And it was... Produced by Benga Akinabe. I think that's how you say his name. It was produced by him. And well, he was like one of the producers on it, or executive producer or something like that. And I remember that movie, but I don't remember if I watched it. I remember it was on Netflix, but I don't remember if I watched it. I kind of get that movie confused with barry jenkins first movie melancholy something and then newlyweds i don't know why i get those two confused with each other but i think i saw the barry jenkins one and the barry jenkins movie and not the newlyweds i can't remember but i'm familiar with his work like he's more so like an independent director but this was beautifully shot this movie was beautifully shot and i loved how the storyline followed both of them. I know it was like people thought that it was just like specifically about um Fred Hampton, but it was just like really showing you how the setup of this man's life, the process of him being taken out, how it was. And you know what else I did not know? I'm well, well familiar with uh, Fred Hampton and his death, but I didn't. I don't know why I didn't know that he was drugged. I did not know that. Or maybe I forgot. I didn't remember that fact. And I was like, oh my God. And I remember watching the documentary. I think it's like I Own a Prize. Too. I Own a Prize. I remember watching that documentary. I didn't know he killed himself too. Um, but yeah. It's just so sad. And he just wanted to like get out of the bed. And it was like, damn dog. You should have really just did the bed. But I can't. Uh, yeah and it was so crazy how there were so many informants yo the, i don't trust the government yo i don't trust the government i don't at all at all so this is like a lot yeah i don't trust the government at all this is like proof and then oh my god and then have y'all seen like the news about Malcolm X, I mean, we knew, but like, damn, I was like, this is, should I take the vaccine? Whatever. But yeah, I'm gonna get the vaccine. Listen, the government is too greedy to, like, this, like, I get it, but, but then it's like, damn, they did set us up. But then you have politicians saying, just go out and just die. I'm just like, yo, what is going on? So maybe I don't know. I feel like my blush, is my blush still on? 
I'm not gonna pop on lashes because I need to go and I'm like been on here for a minute. But hold on, let me put a little bit more of this. But um and I'm no way an uh, expert on doing makeup. I just like the way I do my makeup and I get compliments. Oh, I'm not going to put on lashes, but I did want to show y'all this. I got this House of Lashes little kit. It was They had like some type of sew. And I got this. So I will be using this another day. But I don't want to put on lashes today. Because I'm going to keep it real light. But this is really cute. And I'll link it below in the description bar. But yeah, those movies was really good. It was so crazy. What, what's so crazy about um, Judas and the Black Messiah? I actually felt bad for... Damn, I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. But I actually felt bad for everybody involved. Because he was a pawn. He was a pawn. I felt bad for him. I felt bad, but then I also was like, you know what you're doing. But also, like, you're just not trying to go to jail. And it's like, damn, instead of you should have just took the bed, bro. Should have just took the bed. Okay, so now I'm going to do put some. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. Let me put. I'm going to put. This is, I love this. This is one of my favorite eyeliners. You do not have to get this expensive behind eyeliner. But this is the Giorgio Armani number 12. It's just a brown liner. But something about this. It's just good. Uh, um, watch. Oh, coming to America too. Okay, girl. Let's just talk about it. I don't. I don't want to like. I would never like bash somebody's work because, like I said, like as an artist, like I know it's hard. The same thing that I said about Tyler Perry. How I don't ever want to. Like, bash Tyler Perry, even though, like, some things I don't get along, like, I don't align with. But, um, I don't know. I just didn't really connect with this movie. And I think it was more so I really was, my expectations was high. But I really realized what it was. It was literally a homage to the original. It was just something that they wanted to do to, like, I feel like, the references from the past was more so like oh oh my god peaches oh my god this like but other than that i just was like and i did laugh i ain't gonna front i laughed but i think my expectation was too damn high the only yo the one part where <laughs> the one part where uh lee was like bougie bitch say what i was like I oh like I cackled. I don't know why I found that funny. She was like, "What?" She was like, <laughs> "I don't know why I found that hilarious. I really don't know why." But it was funny. I'm sorry, y'all. I have to concentrate because this is like when you gotta turn your radio down so that you could park your <laughs> you could parallel park. This is like that moment. I gotta concentrate. Yeah, but that's about it. Let me see what else did I was I watching. I don't watch The Bachelor. I don't watch any of that stuff. Oh my god, industry. Let's talk about industry really quickly. Industry came out last year, 2020, in the fall. And a lot of like I watch like Pay or Way. I watch Pay or Way is like a review channel for like t t tv shows movie shows and like all of the other girls like um it's rocks um um just my opinion brandon keith avery i think that's his name and like so many other people like um what is her name i love ashley miller like i watch a lot of those channels but none of them was talking about like they they talked about like Lovecraft Country, but nobody talked about industry. And I'm like, this show is amazing. And listen, I don't really, 
I May Destroy You too was amazing. But industry, I was like, this is, I'm not even, I've never worked in the financing industry. I've worked in the corporate industry and I was just able to see so many parallels from just like working in the fashion industry to the financing industry of like the tone of the office space. And I was like, yo, this movie, I mean, sorry, this TV show is so good. I don't know why people are not talking about this show, but anyway, industry follows, uh, I don't know if it's like five, but it is basically, um, it's about a company called PeerPoint. And every year they do like this graduate program where it's like an internship to hire program. So you come, you have to be someone who graduated college, a recent college graduate, and you come into the program fighting in in capitalist fashion for the spot to get hired at the end of the end of the, the quarter or whatever. I don't know if it's quarter, I think it might be a year. When I tell you Y'all need to watch Industry. It is such a good show. The lead character is Harper, who she did such a great job. She also played in, I don't know if y'all ever seen the movie Premature. She was like one of the artists and she can sing her behind off. But she played the lead character in this movie and, well, TV show, I'm sorry. She played the lead character in this TV show and it was, she did such a great job. I was like, yeah, it's a range. It was such a good movie. I mean, I keep seeing a movie. It was such a good TV show. Shit, maybe they need to turn it into a movie. It was so good. Just like, oh my God. The first episode, I'm not going to say what happened, but something really dramatic, a couple of things dramatic. Because it's like, um, um, the storyline follows like, I think it's like five of them, five of the, the students. And... They literally, it was just crazy. I was like, this is a good ass show. This is the Dior, wait, is this Dior? Lancome. The Lancome, like, base coat, just to, like, give me some eyelashes, because, girl. Um, sometimes I don't like wearing eyelashes. Like, I like to wear my natural lashes. Yeah, that was super good. Lovecraft Country was good too. But after like episode four, it started to get weird. Like, not weird. I don't want to say weird. But after episode four, I was just like, it was getting too fast. Like the story was coming too fast. I'm just like, what the hell? Lovecraft, yeah, Lovecraft Country was really good, though. Um, maybe I need to watch it again. I watched it multiple times, though. Um, but, like, the first four episodes were, were fire. After that, I started to see, like, wait, what? Like, okay, so why y'all didn't put G in another episode? And then, like... The way I'm like, really, y'all gonna kill Tick? I wonder if they're gonna get picked up for a second season. Mm. I'm just like going over all the shows that I've seen. Um, oh, I made a story was really good. I was like, damn, like, and I didn't really watch Chewing Gum like that. I think I watched the first episode and I checked out. I was like, this is not really for me. Um, but I'm gonna let her cook and she definitely did come back with some fire. I was like, okay, girl, I may destroy you is for me. It was such a good television show. It was really thought out. Like the the story arc, the development, it was like really thought out really well. And I was like, this oh my god, this is such a great show. Um, damn, like everything. It was such a great show. And even, like, the, the concept of, like, sexual assault. Do you guys think that... I personally... Is this shit dry, though? I personally feel like it should be an obvious thing to know, like... 
if you wouldn't want this to happen to your daughter or whatever, like, this isn't right, you know? But I feel like we need, like, a re... Like, everything needs to be retaught, especially because this whole, like, T.I. and Tiny situation and, like, what is sexual assault? Um, I think this is draw out. Oh, no, this is actually pretty good. What is sexual assault? Um, even with, like, well, I may destroy you how the scene with, spoiler alert, he took off the condom and that was considered sexual. Who, like, sometimes, like, I was like, oh, shit. Like, I never really thought. I mean, of course, you sh you would think. But even myself, I was like, yeah, like, that's not right. He shouldn't have did that. I mean, of course, he shouldn't have did it. But I never viewed it as being a sexual assault, which is a problem. Like, I should have thought about that as, like, that being some, like, assault. Like, it's not just rape. Like, other things, like, you not... Like, consent is consent. And that's why I think it's, like, the the blurred lines of consent is very relevant in this era. And I think everybody needs to be retaught on things. And even me saying this out loud, like, I was like, but why... Like, of course this would be a sexual assault because... She did not consent to that. But even me, quest I was like, oh, snap. I never even really thought about that. But then even Michaela was like, oh, my God. Like, in the show, she was like, I never really thought about that as being sexual assault. But it is. Like, I feel like I was hurt in that moment. Like, oh, my God. I didn't think about that. But it really is. Again, this is the moment where I'm... Um, turning down the radio as I parallel park because I can't do two things at once <laughs> oh my god mm -mm -mm. this is dried out but this was the Pat McGrath uh mascara I don't know how it's dried out that quick I got this as a sample and I got this as a sample from Sephora so utilize the samples girl so, Charlotte Tilbury, I think I'm going to do this, let's see, Charlotte Tilbury, this is the Charlotte Tilbury pencil in Pillow Talk 3 Intense. And I'm just regularly lining my lips. I think it's like Plush Pout um, by Artist Couture. It's in the color Uncensored. This is very moisturizing. It tastes like spearmint. I'm going to put see-through over top of this. Oh, wait. Actually, I'm going to put, like, Angel Baby just in a little bit in the middle. And then I did not exfoliate my lips, but I always have to like my lips are textured, so I always have to like do like one block. Oh, shit. I don't think I have my spray. Um. Then I'm going to say my powder. I did not use this, but I'm going to use this right now. The Fenty powder in honey.
this is a light little joint, joint, joint. I set my powder. Mm. buff it in this is honey but you can use translucent powder but I just use the honey just to like even it out um and it works for me like this this is where I do my makeup okay okay I like, I like, I like. Uh, so yeah, my makeup is done. This is the look. I'm going to link everything below. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. So I hope this wasn't a bore. Again, I had to get used to doing my makeup and talking. I won't be, excuse my phone. I won't be doing a lot of that. But yeah, let's give a moment of silence for the phone. Okay, the phone is over. So, again, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all of that good jazz. And thank you again for tuning in. Have a great day. Love you. Bye.